All right, you ready to get it rocking right away? Yeah, I'm ready when you are. All right, man, let's do it. Let's do it, man. I appreciate the time, Chase. Uh, you're making your UFC debut at the age of 20 years old, man. It's, it's just so fast. Do you feel like it's really fast, like how you have developed into who you are as a fighter and and where you're at right now leading into your UFC debut? Uh, I think it's fast in some ways. Um, like I started training when I was probably like uh, eight years old. So I've been at it for like uh, 11 or 12 years now. But as far as like since I started fighting, like my first amateur fight was like three years ago. You know, that was my very first fight. And then uh, I've only been a pro for around two years also. So in that regards, quick. Um but I've been training for a while for this. So, throughout the years, you know, who have been the most pivotal people inside the gym and even outside the gym to develop you into the to the fighter you are? Uh, I'd say definitely. Um, like my coach Jeff Hoagland has been like a big influence on me, and uh, another one of my training partners who's a super high level fighter as well at 170. He just got signed to One FC, uh, Joey Perotti. Um, they're guys that are like high level and they'll, um, they kind of push hard, you know, um, they like to train hard, but, uh, I really credit Jeff with like, um, letting me kind of like cultivate my style and like find out what weird stuff works for me. Having Jeff, you know, someone that has fought in the UFC before a veteran, you know, were you, how old were you when he was fighting actually in the UFC? I think he uh, he got in in like 2011, I think. So I was like 11 or 12 at the time, depending on when he got in. And uh, yeah, it was cool to be like uh, a little kid. Like I was still like a pretty, pretty committed to the gym and stuff to kind of um, like grow up with that. And then uh, like to see that it's definitely attainable as long as you work hard. And uh, he's definitely helped me on the path. Um, to where I am now. Yeah, man. It's a that's a great relationship you have, man, especially at such a young age to develop that with a coach. You're from Enumclaw, Washington. I myself actually grew up part of my life in uh South Hill, Washington, which All is right. right between uh Parkland and Puyallup. You know the Puyallup Fair. You've been there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I go to South Hill, I go to the mall and shit all the time. All right, all right, man. Like, uh, I'm 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 an old guy, and you know, and I'm out here in Asia. But yeah, that's where I lived for like probably around eight years of my life. So I know the Enumclaw, Washington area, and it's good yeah. to see a a young Washington kid doing his thing, man. Because to be honest with you, there's not that many fighters coming out of that region that reach to the to the UFC, right? It's there's yeah. a, the old school guys, but when you look at the younger talent. You're one of the the newer faces, right? Do you do you put that on yourself? Like I'm gonna be the face of the Northwest, man. I'm gonna come out here and do my thing in the UFC. Yeah, I definitely think so. Like, uh, no matter where you're from, people are gonna kind of relate you to it. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of. Um, there's definitely people starting to come out a little more from uh, like the area. Got a lot of good guys out of Spokane, Eastern Washington. Um, but yeah, if I could be one of the main uh, fighters out of Washington, that'd be super cool. That'd be a cool uh, like title to have, I guess. 2018, you know, you got your developmental deal with the UFC and you fought three times. How much do you think you have developed or elevated yourself since the Contender Series? I think it's like uh, there's been such a huge like difference in my game since Contender. Um, I probably had uh like a little over a year um in the developmental like program or whatever um until they like bumped me up but i feel like it's been great to get to know like my own fighting style to sharpen all my tools up and uh even stuff like um my last fight in florida i had to do like a ton of media stuff we flew out like four days before the fight and I was like right next to my opponent and all that type of stuff that I'm going to be doing uh, for this next fight. Um, I was able to kind of like get the practice in using the developmental contract. 
And uh, yeah, it was great. I don't think I'd be as ready for the UFC if I just got pulled in right after Contender as I am now. How are you handling all that? You know, the the attention that you're getting at such a young age, doing the media, having this, you know, doing this thing right now, what I'm doing with you, but doing it over and over and over again. You know, I'm pretty sure it's going to become more of a, a burden as you grow in the in the UFC. But right now, how are you feeling about doing everything? Is it fun for you? Yeah, I think it's fun, uh, especially once it gets close to the fight. Um, like all the fight week stuff, it's like a nice distraction from you know, being hungry or being dehydrated or having to fight some dude in a cage in a couple of days. Um, but yeah, right now I'm kind of, uh, I like doing this type of stuff and kind of, um, trying to develop myself as a human being, I guess. Cause, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to work on my social skills. Definitely. Um, combat sports, fitness, your team, you know, you've been doing most of your camp there, but I saw that recently you flew down to California to do some work. You know, talk about that and where were you working? Who were you working with? Uh, I was training at uh, Dynamic uh, MMA down in uh, Modesto, California. It was my coach, Jeff, um, his coach from before he moved up here, uh, Paul Mendoza. He's a super solid. Um, he has a super solid team of like. Uh, shorter guys that are like great strikers so um i was trying to go down there and get some similar looks to what i'm gonna have to deal with here in december and uh yeah it worked out great i got a lot of sparring in with a lot of tough guys and uh i was able to get all the game plan stuff locked in and uh yeah feeling good all right well your opponent daniel tamer he is a, a shorter guy for the division and he seems like he is going for the the kill shot most of the time man like hey can you compare him to any uh fighter that you fought before uh i feel like in some ways he's similar to uh luis gomez that i just fought or maybe uh my last amateur fight i fought another like shorter stocky guy that just kind of uh like throws bombs um but yeah, I think it's a really good style for me. Um, the striking that I do have, I feel like I can work really well against shorter guys. Uh, I feel like I'm getting pretty good at using my length. And uh, I'd say I'm not expecting any world-class grappling. So that's always uh, you know, nice to be able to show my grappling against someone who's not, uh, not as well-prepared in that element. Heading into this fight, it the mentality that you have you know are you in there to finish it as soon as possible or are you expecting you know to go all three rounds with this guy you feel like he's that tough i feel like uh i'm always prepared for either one um i've had fights that have gone 25 minutes i've had fights that have gone 25 seconds so i'm kind of um prepared for whatever I could see uh, me catching him with something pretty quick, be it submission or like, you know, a good shot to the face or something, putting him down. Um, or I could see, you know, going the distance and uh, trying to have more like a John Jones style mm -hmm. of uh, striking. But uh, yeah, I'm prepared for whatever. And I feel like I have significantly more ways to win. So definitely favors me. Have you seen the bout order? It seems like you are the first fight of the night. Am I correct? Uh, I just had somebody ask about that. Um, I'm not sure if I'm the first fight or if I'm the last fight on the prelims. Um, I definitely wouldn't mind being first fight. Um, it's always nice. It's not as much pressure as, uh, as all the other guys. Like They all have to wait and watch all these other fights. Um, like on Contender, I was the very first fight, and that was awesome. That was great. I uh, got in, got out, and uh, was able to watch the rest of them. So if that was the case, I'd be pretty happy about that. Yeah, especially on a card like this. It's probably uh, the biggest event of the year. You know, they stacked it up pretty deep. So, uh, yeah, fighting first and getting that win out the way, getting it, you know, putting it in, in history and then enjoying the night would be fun. Yeah, that'd be great. Now, in that, in the event, uh, the Coleman event, 
UFC 240 Coleman event featherweight title is on the line. You know, you got Max Holloway versus Alex Volkanovsky. I'm pretty sure you've watched both guys fight many times. You know, what is your assessment of this fight? Who do you think is going to take it? I think uh, I think it's going to be very similar to um, a lot of like the heavier weight fights where it's like uh, the lanky striker trying to keep the other guy from just getting his like one shot. Um, I think Volkanowski is going to probably just look for the one and try to mm -hmm. rush in and throw bombs while Holloway is going to try to stay long and uh, – be tall just like he is um kind of similar to me with my guy you know there's yeah, a significant yeah. height difference but uh yeah. there's a definite uh skill difference between me and max Holloway, so i'm not going to make that comparison right now so you feel like uh max has the 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 more options the 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 edge in this one yeah and uh i feel like he's shown how uh like how well-rounded he is against guys like ortega mm -hmm. And even how good his striking is against like Jose Aldo and all that. Um, yeah, I think he'll do really well. I think I'm definitely looking forward to that fight way more than I am the main event. I think that's going to be a boring fight. <laughs> now, with, uh, with being a guy starting his career in the UFC right now, you know, do you look up to any guys that are established already in the UFC champions? Maybe not even a champion, a fighter that you see their career and, and look at him and be like, hey, you know, that's something similar to what I want to accomplish. Uh, at least sty like stylistically, um, I look up to like the Diaz brothers a lot, um, or like Damian Maya because he's a big jujitsu guy. Um, but a guy who I met like pretty recently when I was down in Las Vegas, um, doing some media stuff down there, uh, was Uriah Faber. He's a super cool dude. He's been in the game for a long time. And like he's been able to establish himself in uh, a lot of different areas, not just in fighting, but in like uh, sports nutrition and training and all that stuff. And uh, that's probably one of the guys. Cause he's like a smart businessman. I think that's kind of what I want to do. Have a long career, but uh, not just rely on getting punched in the face to make money. So you you have interest in the other aspects of the game, not just the fighting. You want to be involved with like marketing and maybe management or you know things that along those lines do you have you have you uh, do do you have anything in motion right now no i'm just kind of um feeling everything out um and i want to like establish myself uh focusing on the fighting mm -hmm. foremost as of right now um but yeah it'd be nice to kind of diversify stuff and uh not have to just rely on getting beat up and stuff for money um because i think that's what a lot of fighters do is they don't think about life after fighting like your opportunity to fight is so like short in your life and you have to live for like you know 60 or 80 years after that and uh yeah i'm trying to think about that stuff too well that's the that's a great mindset you know that's i think that's the next generation right there of of fighters they have to have that that mindset when they move into their career because they need to think further along. Um, now, one last thing before I let you go, you know, there's many different types of competitors in the sport. You know, do you consider yourself more of a, a martial artist or a, a prize fighter? I think that there's a, like a fine line between it. Um, and I feel like I'm somewhere in the middle. Uh, I definitely realize that it's not just the sport. Like, uh, it's not like the NBA or the MLB where people care about how well you play. Um, even if you're like a half decent fighter, but you can talk or you can, um, put on exciting fights, that'll get you further than just being a good fighter, but not, you know, having a good personality, not, being able to speak or anything um but yeah i still kind of respect the sport aspect of it but i feel like i still know that i have to go in there and be entertaining um i can't just hold the guy down for 15 minutes and expect people to you know want to watch me fight all right well 
everybody's going to watch you fight. December 14th, UFC 245 in Las Vegas, Nevada, man. Appreciate the time, Chase. Uh, good luck to you. Good luck on the rest of the year. And, uh, and you know, since you fight on December 14th, man, you get to enjoy the holidays, Christmas, all of that. Thanks so much, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it.